The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. The question I would ask you now is, do you honestly believe that right now we have an uber competent, totally awesome pilot behind the, the wheel of the plane who A, acknowledges that all four of the engines are out and B, is actually trying to steer us towards a runway that we can land on? The answer to both of those questions is no. We have the equivalent of a mentally defective um, baboon behind the wheel of the plane. And, and by that, I mean national level United States governance, not only in the executive branch, but also in the Congress. These people are not only all universally psychopaths, but they are all universally slack jawed, mouth breathing imbeciles. If you have any confidence whatsoever that these people can proverbially land this 747, you are out of your mind. So what do you do to defend yourself against this? Withdraw from the system, get as much of your money out of the financial system as you possibly can, hold some of it in cash because the U.S. dollar will persist as being a unit of value for some period of time. But even though I am not a metals bug by any means, when you are in an emergency situation and you are looking at sovereign collapses, yes, metals absolutely are the place to be, gold and silver diversified. All right, and I wanted to move now to this topic of, um, you know, the U.S. collapsing, as you're saying, and you've said that nothing can stop the economy from collapsing. Quote, when the U.S. rates uptick, the last vestiges of the now dead republic will implode. So do you see when this imploding of the United States economy happens, it'll, you're saying it'll just take down the whole financial system of the world, are you saying? Absolutely, yes. Um, you know, we've Obama is running up trillions upon trillions upon trillions of dollars in new debt. Um, the most conservative figure is something like $1.2 trillion in new debt per year. The truth is, is it's more than that because that figure actually isn't counting the new, get, new debt being incurred by Social Security and Medicare. So now understand, okay, Obama since 2009 and then, and then George W. Bush before him was running up large amounts of debt, but Obama has just taken it to this completely mathematically untenable, basically Cloward and Piven strategy level, wherein the Obama regime is actively trying to mathematically collapse the United States. And I firmly believe that they've done it. They've reached critical mass. It can't be walked back now. But understand, let, let's just call it from the beginning of the Obama regime in 2009. Okay, fine. He's running up a trillion dollars in new debt per year, and that debt is being issued, you know, in treasury paper via money, U.S. dollars being just arbitrarily printed out of thin air by the Federal Reserve, and that treasury paper is being issued at what is basically zero percent. 90-day T-bill rates just a few years ago were hovering around 5%. They've now been at zero since the beginning of the Obama regime. So you're issuing a trillion dollars a year at minimum in new debt, and you're doing it at 0%. Okay, what happens when you take that debt that you have issued and you uptick the interest rates just a little bit, and just to, let's say Let's say that, up, that uh, Treasury paper rates uptick to 3%, which historically is extremely low in, a, in an historical context. I mean, 5% was even considered to be historically very low for Treasury paper. If you just go from 0% to 3% interest on this debt, you, you add so much of a debt burden to to the budget of the United States per year, that it will eat up everything else and will completely collapse the system. But again, reiterating, this was all done intentionally. It's called the Cloward and Piven strategy. Cloward and Francis Fox Piven were professors at Columbia University during the 60s and 70s and perhaps into the 80s. And they taught 
this cadre of these neo-Stalinists of whom the front man, of whom the puppet is this guy who is purportedly named Barack Obama, they taught them that the only way that you can destroy the quote unquote evil United States and establish a global totalitarian regime is that you have to collapse the United States from the inside out primar primarily economically. And the way you do that is by overloading the federal government with all of these entitlements and all of this debt and then collapse the entire thing from the inside out. You can't attack it from the outside because the United States was formerly too strong to be attacked militarily from the outside. The way to bring the United States down, and make no mistake, that is the objective of these people. They are traitors. They are seditionists. They are revolutionaries. They are looking to collapse the entire system and have already mathematically accomplished it, is do it from the inside by mathematically overloading um, the debt load. And that will destroy the U.S. dollar, which will then allow a new, probably global currency backed by the Russians, the Chinese, perhaps the BRIC nations, which would be what Brazil, Russia, India, China, BRIC, um, to get them to establish a new currency with perhaps some involvement with, with the Middle East as well. And if you destroy the U.S. dollar, you basically destroy the United States. So before we let you go, can you just lay out for our viewers where you see this all going? I mean, what is the end game of all this? I wish I could end on a better note with you, Elijah, but it's not good at all. I see a total systemic collapse of the United States. I see a total systemic collapse of the U.S. dollar and the financial system, which is why I urge everybody to get out, get out, get out. And if you don't understand what get out means, then there's nothing I can do to help you. I can't tell you how many emails I get per day from people saying, well, I heard you on your interview and I read everything you write. But when you say get out, what exactly do you mean? You don't mean my Fidelity IRA, do you? Okay, I, I, if, if you're so obtuse and you are so thick-headed that you cannot understand what get out means, I can't help you. And there are people who email me and say things like, well, I can't get out of my 401k because then I'd have to pay X number of dollars on in terms of tax liability and then, well, I can't do that. I'm not going to pay taxes. I'm just going to sit and, and hold on to it. Okay, you're going to get all of it stolen. What would you rather do? Would you rather pay your tax bracket in taxes or have 100% of it stolen? And what I would even say beyond that is, what is the matter with you? Why are, we, why are you even still paying taxes? At this point, paying taxes is like paying taxes into the Third Reich. Really? You're a German in 1941 and you have a conscience and you have a brain in your head. Why are you paying taxes to Hitler? That's exactly what's going on here. A, a mass federal tax strike would go a long way to correcting all of this. But of course, people are so chicken and so terrified of the IRS. Oh, no, we can't do that. And of course, Elijah, what, what are the headlines of the last week? The IRS has been coming after people and maliciously auditing people based upon their politics anyway. What are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? How are you going to fix this? How are you going to correct this political system if you refuse to do anything on the offensive tactical side? If all you're willing to do is cower and hide and play prevent defense, how are you going to fix any of this? You have to go on offense. You have to fix your bayonet and you have to charge. You have to be proactive. Do what I did. Declare a federal tax strike. If enough people do that, the, you know, maybe the government would uh, get, get the message if tens of millions of Americans just didn't file. You, you, really, IRS? You want to come audit all of us? You bring it. We're not paying for this anymore. You're paying for a cult of child sacrifice. You are paying for a cult of the ratification of sodomy. And you are paying to arm Mohammedans who are coming to kill you. 
What, how in the world can you justify this anymore? A federal tax strike would go a long way. So my four point plan is media strike, cancel your cable and satellite, B, tax strike, C, eventually it will come to the fact that we should be doing general strikes, which means a total work stoppage. We don't, you don't go to point C until you've done the first two because point C, a general strike actually harms the businesses of your neighbors. But as we saw with solidarity in Poland, general, general strikes do have a place and they do eventually need to be utilized. And then once you've uh, done points A, B, and C, if those don't work, that's when we go to armed counter-revolution. And remember, we are not revolutionaries. Revolution means turning away from God. That is what the Obama regime is. That's what Marxism is. It's a rejection and a turning away from God. We want to turn back to God. We want to be a godly, moral society with the rule of law. That means that we are counter-revolutionary. So never call yourself a revolutionary. You're always a counter-revolutionary, wanting to turn back towards God. And Barnhart, people can find you at barnhart.biz. And once again, thank you so much for joining us today. Go to financeandliberty.com and subscribe for free for more interviews and financial insight. The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide.